Thanks for staying with us. According to reports, governors in the southwest zone have flagged off the operations of the Western Nigeria Security Network, known as Amotekum. The reason behind it is to complement the mainstream security agencies in the country. Joining us now is a special advisor to the Oyo State Governor on Security, Mr. Fatai Owusheni. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Welcome, sir. You can call us on 070-806-68014. You can also tweet to us at TVC. Can I please hashtag your TVC so we can read your tweets? Okay, so we know your state is like the headquarters mm -hmm. somewhat of, of Amotekun. Uh, and we know that um, you're also quite involved in the entire constitution of this group. For those of us who, have, who are still very skeptical on what Amotekun stands for and the objective, could you clearly, in a nutshell, tell us why it was created, why there was need for, these, for, the, for, for, for Amotekun, and why and, and how it's being constituted? How are you getting the people coming together to form the, um, the members of Amotekun? One, it was created to support the activities of the state actors that are involved in um, giving us security. And it was born out of um, the deteriorating security situation that we have in the country at large, and in the Southwest in particular. Um, I've said somewhere, <coughs> the operation is just codenamed Amatekun. You can as well call it Vigilante Group. Mm -hmm. You can as well call it Neighborhood Watch. Mm -hmm. You have Neighborhood Watch Corps in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So you can as well say that is the Neighborhood Watch Corps for Southwest. It is just um, more of, okay, let us do things together. Mm -hmm. Let us cooperate. Let us be front. the back end. So these are non-state actors being used. Who are the non-state actors? the vigilante, there's nothing new. Mm. The Nigeria police has always worked with vigilante. It's just that we don't have them as an organized so group. That, that raises that why, another question. Yes. Why, why are there clashes of interest with the police now? Because this morning, the PRO for Go State was saying that, you know, they're not allowed to carry arms. They, should, they stand the risk of being arrested if they do carry arms. Don is saying they can carry their uh, weapons. Why, why is a recognized um, security institutions having a problem with this setup? The Nigeria police has not said that they're opposed to the creation of Amotekun. Okay. Not at all. Everybody's just sending out narratives. Mm. Very unfortunate and embarrassing that as a lot of people are educated <coughs> and the so-called big men, the colorate issues of security ethnically, religiously. For God's sake, some of the states have been operating things similar to this. Yeah. You have Isba in the north. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody has talked. They have a kind of vigilante arrangement in Anambra. And no one, all the people that have been talking, no one has come to say, oh, I've seen the concept of operations of Amateko. Mm -hmm. The issue of carrying dead guns, I was misquoted. When I was on channels, your colleagues had asked, would they carry weapons? And I said to them, look, some of the elements that we form, that we work with the um, state actors on that, some of them have been on us. In the villages that we are all from, okay, people so. go to farm with their dogs, with their dengon. It is not illegal. There are some states that are using that are lawfully and illegally approved to use um, pump action for their operation. Mm. No one has talked about that. The elites are the problem, the educators are the problem. Anything that is going to benefit the masses, they will corrupt the mind of the masses mm. and they'll be, interpret they be given interpretation, mm. corrupt the interpretation. For God's sake, everybody is saying no, we want to know their modes of operation. If you want to know the modes of operation, then you are a criminal. In security, it's not everything you disclose. Right. Mm. And as I've said, Vigilante had always worked oh, with the police. Please. We have a standard operation procedure. Right. I served in the police for 35 years. Mm. I was here in Lagos as commissioner of police. I worked with Vigilante Group, mm. different Vigilante Group. Okay, but they are not organized. You are now having an organized mm. 
right. um, non-state actors yes. right. let me, to let me, support let me, But, but sir, some of these um, allegations have, you know, it's what uh, people have picked up from the actions that they see. Uh, the inauguration which happened on Thursday last week did not have even the Inspector of General present. And they're supposed to be, you know, complimenting the police, as you say now. So if you don't see the four people in the mainstream, you know, security agencies supporting, supporting what is ha supporting this, you know, security outfit, it seems like there's, the, there's a clash. It suggests that. Mm. So see, what do you say number when... Number one, the Inspector General <laughs> does not have to be there. When they are launching, that is one. Secondly, most of the elements that are going to be used, I can talk of Lagos where I've worked, I've worked in Benue, and even in Oyo State, all the states here in Lagos, they have a law that is enacted that administer and guide the way neighborhood what is, um, is operated. Mm -hmm. In most of the states, you also have laws that are passed for vigilante people. There's the vigilante group of Nigeria. Each of the state has that. Okay. There is practically no state that don't have a law setting up community development association and that's the umbrella under which they relate. And the Nigeria police has been part of this for a very long time. The DFID as a program, I, I brought it out last week, there is what they call guidelines for voluntary policing sector. Mm. And while I was there, we, they were very strong around Agege. We extended it to most of the state. They meet with the police regularly. It doesn't mean that the Inspector General of Police Absolutely. had to sit down there. there. Right. People are giving all sort of narratives. Okay. Very, very unfortunate. Okay, no me... one has seen the concept. No one, someone is saying they will pay them this amount of money. <laughs> Look, let the people that are going to run this thing come and talk. Right. <laughs> okay, the, okay. The, okay, I just have... To also, to also be fair, there are people who have applauded, you know, this um, project. I mean, um, we have the people in, the so in Southern Kaduna, Middle Belt, you know, the Middle Belt region. They've all applauded it and, you know, asking for something like that for them as well. But Mieti Allah has sp sp um, spoken and they're saying that they hope this would not be something like what happened in Benue State, where they set up the livestock guard. And for them, they felt that it was used to, against um, was used against them. You know, they were being um, rustled, uh, monies were taken from them, and they are asking the questions that is this different? Hope will, different? there will not be injustices, you know, meted against us from this thing that is being created. It may be annoying, but it is fair to ask these questions. And then it's good that when you have an opportunity like this, to make it clear to Nigerians what it truly stands yeah. for. You will not like it if you are a criminal. Hmm. Those elements are supposed to operate within their neighborhood. They know the terrain. I have given examples from Ibadan, where I came from this morning. If you are going to Ijebubo, which is Ogun State, from Akan, there's a main road that leads to um, Ijebubo from Akan in Ibadan. There are also footpaths inside the bushes that lead to Akhara, and you are getting these elements that are called um, neighborhood watch vigilante, but the operation is codenamed Amotekun for the purpose of networking. Who are, they, they, they were born in that village, they can tell you that there are 50 footpaths that lead from Akhara to Jebu. It's like where we are right. sitting down now. So, you can enter this place right. from different okay, angles. Let me, I believe it's a general statement when you say that the, you have to be a criminal to question the, the, the mode of operation and or demand to know. The, I believe that it's too general because for fear of human rights abuses, you might want to question uh, to know exactly what their limits and extents are so that you don't cross them or have any issues with them. They are like, there's this always the likelihood of someone in position abusing that position. Even the state actors the police, the military, the SSS, and Nigerians still not saying that they are trampling on people's rights. These people have not even started. It's like you have an Olode yeah. in front of your yeah. house. But I, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let me rephrase. Me. Me. So let me try to hang so, in there. Let me, let me try to rephrase what I'm hearing. Yes. We are yeah, giving these, li these people license, obviously, to gather intelligence, to go into the bushes. Yeah. We're saying that there are some people who are doing legitimate headsman businesses. Mm -hmm. 
that may come in not contact with this Amoteku group. Mm -hmm. And then because now your job is to either arrest or to um, alert the police about these people, you might actually abuse it such that you are targeting these people wrongly. The guideline is very simple. Okay. The power you have of arrest yes. is the same power they have of arrest. Okay. It's a different thing if you say they are creating a detention camp okay. or a cell. Every citizen has a power of so arrest. arrest. Okay. So they can also give information. I've said liking them to CCTV. Mm -hmm. In security, there's something we call human, human intelligence. It is for them to be at the back end. We've seen this. And when you talk of Mieti Allah, you talk of people that are rearing animals. The states that have that law, mm -hmm. every law must be obeyed. Mm -hmm. So if that state has that law and you give information, what are we talking about? If I'm rearing my animals and I've gone deliberately to go and destroy somebody's farms, is it also lawful? Mm -mm. Is it right? And they've given information to the state actors to say, this is what we've seen. In order not to have conflict, come and um, Which is why you say knowledge is power. Yeah. So a person asking questions question simply needs not, clarity. Mm -hmm. So if you give clarity, this is what they would be doing, this is how they work, this is how they operate, people will relax. Most of Most us of the, don't the, want the, to The PR around Amoteko mm. has not really been up at par, if you, if, you, if, you, if you ask me. I believe that, that they, they should educate people more on why and how they will operate. People, in, you, you, you will just have someone living around you, uh, watching you, and you, you really don't know who is who. Mm. You don't know the line of abuse. When you get to the police station, there might be a, cl a clash of interest as well. So but I think you should know probably, who is watching you now when you have educate. a neighborhood watch around. Some of the neighborhood all, watch are not wearing I want to come to that. They watch what you do. The vigilante, when I was there, I've cited examples. There are some of the deadly criminals that we got arrested here. The information, the partnership from them. Have what do they call community policing? That's what they call mm. community policing. Well, but the elites, because they have the opportunity, mm. anything that is going to benefit the masses, they want to corrupt it. Okay, let me have to go on a break, because I want country. to bring in our next, our second guest to join you, because I need to understand how effective this because you, you, you've been a police in Lagos State yes. and you know how things are, especially even in Benue State. Gathering intelligence, if, if that's going to be their core, and you're not going to arm them. People are, some people are worried that, are you sure you wouldn't, these people wouldn't, be, wouldn't, don't, wouldn't need to be armed at some point? Would it because be effective? Would it be effective? Just all they're doing is just driving their trucks into the bushes, mm. looking around, snooping uh, around, giving and giving. Just, it's like, uh, how effective would this be? Well, we'll talk about that when we, go and, when we come back from this break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We have with us the former military intelligence officer, Captain Ali Umar Babangida. Uh, welcome to the show, sir. Good to have Morning. you. Thank you. You can call us again on 070 8066 You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTVC so we can read your tweets. All right. <clears throat> so as an ex-military man, um, in your view, the, op the, the proposed operation of Amotekon, how effective do you think it would be? Because Nigerians are feeling like this is just another organization. We have so many groups in various states. Mm. The, we have Lagos has the NNLNSC, all the various neighborhood watches. Everybody created something in their various cocoons. But now they're having something wider. Is it going to be more effective or should we revert back to what we have in the various states? What, what are your thoughts on it? Effective or not will depend on the actors involved in bringing it together. But what I can tell you is the formation of uh, Amoteko is itself indicative of something. We are looking at an age and a time where it has become apt, pertinent, that our governors are beginning to consider regional security initiatives, bilateral and multilateral. And um, if we were to explain it to the average person out there, the way we could put it is very clear and simple. Is there a demand for security? Mm -hmm. And is the supply available optimal? So if we were to go out there now and buy one sweet or one tom tom that we could eat and be secure for one month, would there be any particular Nigerian that can say, a month has passed where he ate the available brand of that sweet 
and he had security for 30 round days, given the proliferation of acts of crime. For example, on my data from 1st October, sorry, from 1st January till today, you need to understand, you need to see what has happened in this country across board. So basically what we are seeing is a situation where the yearnings of the people is informative and indicative to the developments we are seeing today. It's not only about Amoteko. There are other regions or let me say other governors that have already indicated interest yeah. in doing something similar. Yeah. So now that we have not any doubts concerning the push pull that is demand and supply. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll let you continue. I'll let you, I'll let you I want to ask there's this, this continuous conversation about restructuring. Mm -hmm. It was a regional policing. Mm -hmm. We've been fighting it in the House of the National Assembly <laughs> back and forth. You know what? There's no clear direction. <laughs> oh, but with Amoteco now, yes. and possibly like back others, way of some people are saying it's possibly a backdoor approach to that regional policing. And gradually we start sipping into that true federalism system that people are clamoring for. Do you agree? Or do you still think that, and, and, and I like also CP... Um, Straight on. Restructuring is a no-brainer. For God's sake, I'm not 50 yet, but I'm close to that. I know Nigeria is more than that. Mm. If you had a house that your dad built 50 years ago, I'm sure your friends will be booing you by now if you haven't refurbished or <laughs> renovated it. Mm. That house should be antiquated. You see, restructuring tends to give some people cold feet. But whether we like it or not, we evolve. We have evolved over the last... Even the media evolves on a daily basis. No two newspapers of yesterday and today are identical. They carry news as in something new every morning. So that tells you within a 24-hour span, we have evolved to like 30 pages or 50 of a newspaper that it takes to contain news. So basically, we have to evolve because we are in a constant state of flux. So restructuring by any name, even you have restructured between last year, January 1 and now, you are a year older. Sir, we, are not, we are not disputing <laughs> yes. the need for restructuring. We are saying that this is a backdoor way of doing it, at least restructuring our security in Nigeria. If the Southwest is getting theirs, other regions will start to get theirs. Eventually, we will get one in the East. Now take for instance in the East, the people who know the region are people that most of us have, um, you know, alleged to be IPOP members. We have proscribed this group as, as, a, as a, a, a terrorist group and the likelihood of having a security outfit in the East and then recruiting most likely members from that group. Is it not a, a, a problem, threat? a threat to the, to the unity of the country? Not at all. I'll tell you why. You see... If the center was how it is in my imagination, all they need to do is to play Big Brother. And what is Big Brother? They're going to have their say. They're going to do it the way they want. You're going to actually draw the rules. Mm. And the rules should not be drawn with mischief, mischievous intent. You don't draw rules for them that will sabotage it and make it stillborn. Initial. Let me tell you why I say so. You see, IPOB and all these things, whichever way we choose to label them, let's not forget something. For me, a security officer, there is an indicator there. Why would they have formed these groups ab initio? You see, I have this lecturer that used to say, anyway, now we. You see, when one way doesn't work, for options. as creatures of habit and we are social in it, we will, we will create options. We will create options. Okay, before yeah. time, let me let uh, uh, Mr. Former CP, Patai mm -hmm. respond to that and I'll come to you, Bajalu. The issue of using this as a backdoor approach to restructuring. Um, restructuring is a different thing. Um, and security, when you talk of security, you, you don't talk of, uh, you, you, you know, just using loose language to describe security. When it comes to security, it shouldn't be colorated ethnically. It shouldn't be colorated religiously. Okay. Why was Amotekun created? Why do we have vigilante group? For people not to resort to self-help, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Uh -huh. When you are talking of cooperation um, amongst states as well, we once had what we call G8. G8 was the security um, 
uh, outfit put up for the North Central. Mm -hmm. They will meet, they will deploy. And we're also now talking of getting community people, non-state actors, involved in security with regards to information intelligence. Mm. And we are also talking of, oh, who would support the state actors that are on the road? And that right. is where this had come in to say, okay, let us get these people together. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, you know, we've had like um, an age-long illness of interagency rivalry. We see the police, the army, the mainstream security outfits not really working well together. Now, what's no. the guarantee that with this Amoteko, that everyone, every outfit will work harmoniously? Mm. Before you answer that question, I, I was just being told that I have the DG uh, Dawn Commission Development for uh, Western Nigeria, Mr. Sheye Oyeleye. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning, good ladies. Good morning. Good to have you on the show. One of my favorite programs. Thank How you. you. Very good. Very good. <laughs> we have been concerned about what we saw in the papers this morning. There have been issues of the fact that they're going to be paying 13,500 naira to each of these people. And um, I think the farmers' organization was saying that um, Agbakoya was saying was suggesting that they should pay them fifty thousand naira. Could you please clarify what has been agreed to pay to members of uh, Moteko? Okay, thank you um, for that. Um, you see, a lot of um, a lot of uh, maybe because of this, we are in a social media age. People just um, sit behind their laptops and then put out a story, and it, it goes viral. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you straight away that the way the uh, Moteko is operating is that the state. The state, individual states, are responsible for the recruitment, and no state will be paid below the minimum wage for whoever they recruit. So this 13,005, someone plucked it from somewhere in the air and put it out in the space. We, at no point, during the implementation plan for Amoteco, did we ever mention 13,005? No. So I'm actually mystified where the figure came from. Mm. Do you, do you think the states have the capacity to pay this money? Seeing that we have an we're issue with the with minimum, we're struggling already. with the 30,000 naira minimum wage, and now we're going to have to recruit more people to join in this scheme. Do you think the states can actually pay? Sustainable. Put, put it this way. If, if the states, if we are advocating, and I'm pleased to take my words, my, pick my words carefully here, if we are advocating state police as an example, Assuming that tomorrow morning state police was approved, the states will have to pay their policemen. Now, let me go further. Presently, presently, and people don't know that, a lot of the funding for the police is actually being done by the states. Okay. Anyway, Amoteco will be funded mostly from the states through their security trust fund. So I see no difficulty at all in paying the personnel. Again, I have to emphasize, this is not um, uh, one army or that is being set up and they will be paid centrally. No. As I said to you, the states are recruiting. So if your state has 300 members in your Amoteco, the states will pay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure any state will be paid below the minimum wage. Okay. This 13 five figure will not okay, go viral. Point taken. Point taken. Yeah. Um, yeah. Last week in the papers, there were also allegations that, you know, all the governors were not in consensus on this. Considering that some of the governors were absent at the commissioning of the Amoteku project in Oyo. Again, five governors were there. Three governors, Three governors and two. No, let me finish. Five governors were there. Three governors and two deputies. Deputy. Oh, yeah. The deputies represented their principles. You see, the, the challenge is we like to major on minor in Nigeria. Mm. All the states sent in their vehicles for the launch all the states, including the personnel, which clearly shows the six states are in sync. They, paint, they were all painted the same color, the same logo. I'm not sure a governor who didn't come would have sent in his vehicles or the personnel if he wasn't interested. The governors that didn't come had genuine reasons for not coming. Thank you very much. It wasn't much. that they're taking it lightly. Thank you very much, Mr. Oyeleya. Unfortunately, I have to let you go. We're running out of time. Thank you so much. Let me let him answer no, the last question and we're running for the break. Uh, you were talking about Synergy. Synergy. And I must tell you that truth be told, like any initiative, there will be seething problems. Mm. There will be those unforeseen I's and T's.
that I will come across. The advice here is we must first and foremost make those problems vehicles for learning and honing in to become better. What I'm seeing right now is people are already giving the dog a bad name so they can hang it. Okay. But that does not conflict with the fact that the same people are crying that our insecurity index is at an all-time high. All right. Gotcha. All right. Let's go to quick. When we come back, we'll try to wrap up on this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Yes, Mariam had a question. Yes, sir. As a former military intelligence officer, I just want to... I want your opinion honestly that do you think a group like this without arms will work we're talking of kidnappers we're talking of armed robbers mm. you know those are the reason these are the reasons why it has been set up and we're saying they're going to go in without any arms and ammunition mm. as someone who's worked you know close in intelligence unit what do you think let me first of all tell you something about what i think before i explain what you've said okay I think our federal government has what I call a security complex. And that security complex is akin to thinking that we just have to do it all. Mm. Trying to secure Nigeria federally is like using a fishing net and trying to use it to catch tadpoles. Mm. Okay. At this point on 2019 Earth, if we are not thinking regional security initiatives across all regions, then we are not getting anywhere because the criminals are getting bolder. Some few days ago, they went and took on a former president. Does that tell you anything? Mm -hmm. They have no reckoning for law. And what is the advantage of regional initiatives? They complement that which is federal mm -hmm. and the regions have more native ability than the federalists will ever have. Native ability is about giving the dog the bone around his neck. He cannot eat it. In so you, simple English. In simple English, you take policing, you take security to the people. If democracy is government for the people, people. by, the, by people, the people, right? Mm -hmm. Security can also be security for the people, by the people. So how we take it from here will inform whether these guys will use catapults, or they will be armed properly to meet the threat. I mean, bandits and all sorts are carrying very sophisticated so weapons, we are, and we, we are, are not, not sure yet at this point if they will be using. We are not sure them. yet, but the way we go about it, both the actors and the appraisers will determine whether they know. gain we'll beautiful. Yeah, we'll exactly, well, exactly. You. I have to wrap up now, but uh, I'd like you, Mr. Fatai, we should say something because I know your state is, a, is at the forefront of this, and the governor Makinde is really. He, he, he was he's driving, I'm here, I'm told he's driving this. Could you tell us what, if headquarters being in or your state, how would that work with all the other states? The, I can tell you the headquarters of Don Commission is in Nibado. Okay. Mm -hmm. But no one has said this is the headquarters of Amoteko. Okay. The DG okay. has made it clear. Okay. Each of Each the states state will operate. Mm -hmm. But as Governor Faimi put it, there will be situation where you have handshake. You yeah. are share intelligence right. uh -huh. and to we'll help your right. operation. Well, and well, thank that you is so it. much, sir. Thank you very thank much you for joining us this morning. Hope you got some clarity on Operation Amotec. And when does it start again? It started, right? Really? I guess some states don't have trucks yet, so don't have vehicles. It's, a lot of the state brought their vehicles to oh, Ibarra. Yes, it's yes, it's yes. still an ongoing thing. Okay, um, okay. The structure has been put up. Right. That is why I said everybody is just making comment okay. each of the state is we'll look out for them as, going. And, um, right. as we go on it will right. be clear that's all we can take on the show today i hope you learned more about this operation we'll see you tomorrow bye bye